Hello and welcome to the Georgia State Fair. My name is Peter Vossenberg and I am one of the Georgia Crone Executive Chefs. Uh, I'm here at Helms College in Augusta, Georgia where I'm a culinary instructor. And we're in one of these beautiful culinary labs that we have here at the college. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be with you today. What we'll be doing today is a roasted butternut squash and leek soup, which I'm going to be using, of course, as many Georgia grown products as I can, but especially I'm using Augusta honey, Augusta olive oil, and some of our vegetables are definitely being the butternut squash and the leek are definitely coming in from Georgia. What I've already done is I've diced up some of the product already so I can get it in the oven. So we need to get this in the oven first, and then I'll go back and I'll show you how to peel it and cut it itself. Okay, so we're going to start with our uh, butternut squash and leeks and get them uh, tossed in olive oil, a little salt and pepper, some thyme, and we'll get those in the oven as fast as possible. So I will go. So again, I have this already diced up for us because we need to get this in the oven as soon as possible and then I'll show you how to dice and slice these leeks. So we have some nice diced butternut squash and that's just one, one decent sized squash which I have over here, about the size, just one of them, that's all we need. Our leeks, I'll put in there. I already have chopped up thyme. I'm going to put some salt and pepper. I don't use iodized salt, I don't use kosher salt. There's a salt out there that's very flaky, it's nice and flaky, and it's called Maldon Sea Salt. It's a flaky salt. And so that's what I use. Gives a little bit more uh, flavor for me. And we got some crushed pepper. Whoops. I'm glad I had that all done up. Good. We're toss it up a little bit. All right. So I'm going to add. The olive oil, called uh, extra virgin olive oil from Georgia Olive Farms in Lakeland. And all we're doing is trying to coat. We're just coating the vegetables. Right? We don't want to drown them in olive oil. We just want them to have that nice flavor. So these are the thyme sprigs that I have right here that I used when I when I did the thyme, chopped the thyme up. Back here I have some vegetable stock. So I'm going to add these thyme sprigs to fortify the stock. We already have enough pepper, don't we? <laughs> okay, we're going to put this on a sheet pan. I have parchment paper, or you can use aluminum foil if you want and underline it. Maybe have a silk pad. And then spread it out. So it evenly covers the sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan or a cookie sheet pan that you might have at home. All right. So what you're looking at is you're looking at your butternut squash, your leeks, thyme, salt and pepper, Right, and just a nice glaze of olive oil, right? a nice glaze of olive oil. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some aluminum foil on this to cover it. And I have my oven preheated at 400. All right, 400. I'm going to leave a little bit of an opening at the end because we're roasting these but we don't want to steam them as well, right? So we want to get that 
nice crunch. And what I'll do is I'll pull this aluminum foil off right before we're getting ready to pull them out of the oven. All right. But this gets, helps it get cooked a little bit quicker with that steam. But you definitely want an open end on it. So we have those in the oven. And I have uh, two types of ovens that I'll be using today. This is a Rastel over here, which is a combination oven that we use in the industry a lot. It can steam, it can roast, it can do a combination of roasting and steaming. Uh, you can actually use it to smoke items also. Uh, but for our use right here, uh, it's definitely gonna be for roasting. And I have it set at 400. It's a confection oven, so it has a fan in the back so it's rotating all that heat around so it cooks evenly around it. We also have a regular oven down here, another confection oven that I'll use for a warmer. Right. So the pots you see behind us, this is our vegetable stock. All right. So I made this earlier and what I use is carrots, onions, celery, some herbs, some leek that I use to trim. Then I have another pot back here, and that's what I'm going to use when I puree, puree, puree excuse me, puree the uh, leeks and butternut squash. And right here, let me get this bowl out of the way. Right here is our uh, our blender. We call it a Vitamix in the industry. It's uh, a very powerful blender that we use, and we're going to use this to puree all. The ingredients that we have in the oven and here with some chicken stock. We'll have the chicken stock in there, we'll put the leeks and the butternut squash in there, puree it up, then we're going to transfer it over to this pot here and then we're going to finish it with heavy cream and Augusta honey. We're also going to add a little bit of seasoning that I use is truffle salt you can get anywhere that you want. And I'm going to put a little bit of truffle oil on there too. Just a hint. Just a hint. That brings out the earthiness of the butternut squash and it really gives some great flavor. Then we're also going to top it off. Uh, I'm to put a little bit of dollop of olive oil and I might put some sour cream on there too. I haven't decided yet. All right. So we're going to clean those up a little. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you how to cut up some items. Okay, so we'll go with the butternut squash. What I do is I cut them the ends off, so a little bit more stable. Actually, okay, so set up like that. Then I have a vegetable peel. Okay, so. Pull the sticker up. Pull this peel like that. Use a vegetable peeler, or some people can go down and you can use your French knife and trim it that way. So, what we'll do is we'll do it this way for the top. All season, right? So we got some beautiful vegetables that are coming through from our great farmers. At the college here, uh, we buy our produce through Fresh Point, which is part of uh, Cisco, and they have a really great, great. Uh, let me get this bowl back. Excuse me great program that we use with our local farmers. I'm going to save these scraps because one of my students, uh, she's starting a compost and I told her that I'd save all my trimmings for her. So then you can use your peeler if you want, if you're not that strong with a chef's knife. And you peel around. Right. And then you come down. You go around or down, whatever way you feel fit. Right. 
Man, I can smell it already in here. Smelling great. Woo! But with this recipe, you can actually use this puree and hold it. And then when you're ready for service, or ready to serve, to serve your guests, then you can heat it up and then add the cream to it and some more vegetable stock to thin it out to the consistency that you like. So that way, as, it, as it's a concentrated, it'll last longer for you. But I also use this recipe for uh, sauces. I use it for uh, stuffed ravioli, little pumpkin ravioli, stuffed pumpkin ravioli, and I use this as my sauce when I serve it. Okay. So, tricky part. You need a sharp knife, right? Sharp knife. Wipe this off real quick. This is a steel. This is a honer, right? It holds a knife. I go down this way. Some people go out way, out. Some people go down this way. But you go from the heel of your knife all the way up to the tip. And you just run it down. Make sure your thumb and fingers are behind this so you don't cut yourself. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice down, I would say a quarter of an inch. Right. You have these all lined up. And you're going to cut them into strips. And we're probably going to do uh, a large dice, medium to large. That way it'll cook a little bit faster. The smaller the product that you have, the quicker it'll roast for you. All right? When you're cooking those potatoes, you know, how, how fast do you want them to cook? Depends on the size that you do, you do when you cut them. Okay. Slide this to the side. 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 So right now I'm thinking about my students when they're doing their knife skills practice. We're always complaining because I do it with them. I do it right next to them. And uh, I said, hey, after 40 years, you'll be able to do it as quickly as I can. But time to time, I still nick my fingers. So. So this is butternut squash. Diced up. And again, this is what I did prior. You know, that's what's in the oven right now. Put that in there. All right. And I'll do a leak for you. This is called a fish spatula. Okay. Right. You got your rubber spatula here. This is a fish spatula. If you look at it, it's very open. That way, you can get all the grease or butter that you're cooking in, and it goes away before you plate the fish. All right. So. Very nice tool to use. Leeks. This is how I do it. So I cut down, I make, cut it in quarters. So I'm going to go down from the tip, down, down. Okay. I'm not going to use the green, green part of it. And that's pretty much where all the dirt is. Remember when you get leeks, it all of a sudden it's got so much dirt in it. Well, it all accumulates up here in the top. It doesn't really accumulate down here. So what I do is I just, if I'm going to use the green, I'll cut that separately so I can wash it. Okay. Come down. Doing about a quarter of an inch. Okay. One more. Good luck. 
Put this into the compost. And to the control of the hull. What I'm going to do with some of this right now, I'm going to add it to the vegetable stock here. I got celery. It was celery. So I'm going to add some leeks to it. Just a little bit. And that's going to fortify it even more. Right? Even more. Some onions, some carrots. Here's the thyme. There we go. So with thyme, you just grab the top of it and then you just pull straight down. And all the leaves come up. So that's how I do the thyme that I put in with leeks. And butternut squash, grab them, pull them straight down. One of the easier herbs to peel. And again, I'm just going to break these up, the stems up, into the pot. And with your knife, your chef's knife, you get your herbs and you pinch, right? You pinch with your fingers, and then you can chop it up a little bit, make it a little bit finer. What I'm doing, I'm using my knuckles as a guide for my knife. So my fingers are out of the way, it's a claw. So you put your fingers in a claw, and use your knife to go by the side, So I'm going to actually put this back in to the stock also. See the cutting board on. As I tell my students, stay clean, clean as you go. It's a lot easier to do it while you're working instead of waiting to the end. We have a mess everywhere. And I go in the hand, into the trash can. So go in the hand, in the can. A lot of people have a bad habit of sweeping on the floor. When I first got home from culinary school and was cooking with my mother, she noticed that a lot. <laughs> she goes, Peter, you know, you're throwing that all on the floor and there's nobody else to clean but you. I said, yes, mom, yes, mom. So what I'd like to do for you now, when these things are roasting, ah, uh, looking good. And I'm gonna check them real quick. And we get Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So we have that going. I just took uh, the aluminum foil off just to put it to the side. It's starting to roast a little bit more. Uh, so it's almost done. So what I'm going to do is going to show you how to sicile an onion. All right. So this is a peeled onion. Hey, okay, you want to go north to south, not east to west when you cut it. You're going to lay it down flat, you'll have the root end on one side and the stem on the other. So root ends on the left, you're going to put your knife and you're going to go up a little bit at a time, right? You're going to go up about a quarter of an inch each time. And what we do call this is sicile, and you want to go eight tenths of the way through, or three quarters if you want. And then you want to turn it towards you, when the slice you were cutting, right, stem side, and then go down, same thing, quarter of an inch apart, and then you cut down a quarter inch apart. And as you see, you get small diced onions, 
pretty easy. Instead of ta 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 ta, everybody does ta 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 ta. You can do it just like that, and nice and easy for you. I'll put these in the stock too. Side to side. Got some celery. Just cut it in strips. What we call them a batonet size. Get them together. And then you're rocking that knife. The knife's not leaving, you're, you're on a pivot, on a pivot right there. Right. And you guessed it, right into the vegetable stock. And you have a carrot, a little bit more difficult because it's more firmer. I already peeled it. I put this aside. Cut the tips off. Cut it in half. Depending on what you want to cut is the thickness. If you're looking for a small dice or a grimoire, you want to go a little bit thinner with your cuts, almost the size of a, a mat stick or a french fry if you want. That's more of a batonet. So we're going to go small dice. All right, so they look not that big. All right, like a french fry. And this is how you get your small dice carrots. So if you want to stir stir them up, make a vegetable with some carrots, right? With your fresh green beans and carrots, or you're making a vegetable soup. Remember, the smaller the cut, the faster it's going to cook. Cleans your cup. I have my sanitation bucket down here. That's where I keep on going down for. Safety first, right? So in the college here, the culinary school, we're in session. Uh, I know with COVID and all that, it's, it's pretty intense, but. We do have our masks that we use. When we're here in school, we have our masks on, and we're washing our hands constantly, and we have limited space. Like the table I'm on right here, usually we had two, maybe three people on this one little table, but now we only have one person per table, so it's spread out. We're breaking classes down, and we're really in touch with the COVID, and we're teaching them all about that in sanitation class. Every time we're coming in, I mean, we've really got to be on it. So remember, safety first is a big thing. Big thing. All right. So my leeks look good. Yeah. See that? Nice and pretty, right? And since they were small dice, they're ready to go. They're nice and tender. So if you have big, large clumps of it, it won't work. No way, it won't work. All right, so I'm gonna let this on the back here. We're gonna get set up. We're gonna set up right here. So again, this is the Vitamix. I'm gonna turn it sideways here so I can actually see the dials up front. I'm gonna put a little stock in this first so it has some moisture on the bottom. Then I'll put the product in there, the leeks and onions and thyme. 
Burn mix it up with some more stock, and then I'll put it in this pot here. I'll probably do it two times. All right, I'll do it two times. So right now, I want to do the stock. Well, it has all those ingredients in it, so I have a little colander, and I'm going to strain it. I don't know if you can see this. It's beautiful. It's got all the onions and carrots that we have, the celery, the thyme. I mean, very nice. So I'm going to put, this is an eight ounce ladle, so I'm going to put two cups in there. I'm going to put this back in, right? Waste not what not. Now I'm going to get the squash. Oh, this is look wonderful. This is where I'm going to use my fish spatula. There's not that much oil in here. Because why? Why isn't there a whole bunch of oil resonated on this? Because when we put the olive oil in, we only coated the product. That's it. It might all work in one. Maybe it'll work. Let's go. So if you don't want the color of the onions charred, leeks, I, I like that flavor. Gives it more earth tone to it. But you can actually wrap this up tight. Wrap it up tight. But you want to foil and it'll steam. It'll steam so you won't get any color whatsoever. Another two cups. It's going to get a little loud. So we're mixing it up right now, we're pureeing it. Get that nice color, butternut squash. Remember, we roasted it, so it's going to be. It's not going to be that this color. thinking about is uh, I'm put this well, let's do it all in one pot let's do it right in here so we can do everything right here because it doesn't have a lot of volume and uh, we'll start doing it right there so here we go we're just gonna use the blender we're gonna blend it all up there instead of using the pot back there so a gust of honey I'm gonna add a gust of honey to this probably about Three tablespoons. Going to add a little bit of truffle oil. 
maybe a teaspoon. With the truffle salt, I'm just going to add a pinch. That's all you need because it's very, very strong. If you don't have truffle oil, if you don't have truffle salt, just use regular salt and pepper if you want. That's no problem. All right, no problem at all. Now I have the heavy cream. I have about three cups of heavy cream right here. What we're going to do is we're going to get this going a little bit. And I'm going to stream it in through the top. Hear it? I'm going to stream it through. The smell is amazing. Amazing. Looking for nappe, which means not too thin and not too thick. Right, just to cover the back of the spoon. Let that go for a second. Taste it first and see if we need to add stock or we need more cream. We need a little bit more truffle salt or salt. Definitely a little bit of honey. So this heavy cream makes it more, gives it more body, right? So that's why you don't use milk, because milk won't give it a lot of body. The heavy cream will, and since it's a hot soup, that heavy cream will make it a little bit thicker too. So I'm gonna have to add some vegetable stock. Again, I'm gonna check Consistency. Ooh, it's looking good. See how it drips down? That covers the back of the spoon. Again, that's called nappe. Wow, I think it's good. Very good. We don't have to play with it anymore. And that's what you need to learn. Once it has that flavor profile that you like, don't mess with it. No, I don't add a little bit more of that, so a little more of that. If it's perfect right there, that's what we want to do. Okay? So, now we're going to serve it. Have a bowl right here. I'm going to move this over to the side. What I did forget to do is get some chives. Got some chives right here. And that's going to be on our garnish. So chives are a little bit tricky, but they're nice and thin. You got to really squeeze your fingers in really tight, and you want to get them as tight as possible. You don't want to chop, 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 chop. You want to get your knife as close as possible to it, and you're bouncing right off the end of your fingers. Your garnish. Where are these going to go? You got it. In the vegetable stock. All right, so we're going to ladle this in. Wish you were here. It's very yummy. It 
So it depends on how thick you want it, how thin you want it. Screw that to the side. Move this way. Okay. So we have that. We're going to put that, those chives right in the middle. Now, if you want, you can drizzle a little bit. We're going to put it on a spoon and drop it, two drops. This is that Georgia olive oil. So good, so good. Come from Lakeland, very good. Now there's a one other thing I want to show you in the garnish. What I did is I softened up some sour cream and I did a little bit of citrus, a little bit of lemon in it to soften it up and I put it in this too. And we're going to drop this in too. So what we're looking at, it has chopped chives, olive oil, sour cream with a little bit of lemon. And if you want to get fancy, you can just use the tip of your spoon and go around in a circle with the dots of lemon or dots of sour cream and oil are. And it gives it a little bit of a swirl. It's driving me crazy with that spill, sorry about that. But here we go. Zoom in there if you can. But this is our Georgia grown butternut squash, leek. They're roasted and we make it into a soup. You can make it into sauce also. We use the gusta honey in there. Dust olive oil. We have awesome butternut squash come from the farms here in our leeks. So thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please, uh, my name is on the recipes or pbossenberg at goodwillworks.org and I'll be glad to talk to you. Enjoy the rest of your day.